Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment, speakers, amplifiers, DACs, turntables, headphones, headphone amplifiers uh, should cost more than a tropical aquarium with the fish in it. Okay? I don't know how much they cost. I'm assuming they cost more than that. But here's what you get with a tropical aquarium. Uh, you get to look at the fish and it reduces your stress. Okay? All right, music can do the same thing, but... There's something special about fish. So, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the Yamaha three-way NS 6490s. They're 120 or 130 dollars on Amazon right now. Okay, so grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Yamaha whatever model number I just said. Uh, today's sponsor is the London Gentleman's 100% uh, authentic fur handkerchiefs, okay? Uh, when you want to blow your nose uh, into uh, something that's permanent and you can stick it in your pocket, and it's also soft at the same time, go to London Gentleman's fur handkerchiefs, okay? They're much more convenient than uh, something like this. Uh, because you get to carry your mucus around with you in your back pocket. Uh, that's how Grandpa did it. That's how America does it. It's worked out pretty well so far. Okay. All right. Yamaha NS6490. <clears throat> $130 on Amazon. I purchased these, so they're mine. So I can say whatever I want to say about them. All right. Let's talk about some specs. Uh, they have an 8-inch woofer. It just says dome woofer, okay? Um, I think it's paper. Paper woofer. They have a 4-inch uh, paper mid-range. I'm not going to touch it because I don't want to break it. Uh, and then a uh, 0.75-inch uh, dome tweeter. Doesn't say what kind of material it is. It's just a, a dome tweeter, okay? Again, not going to touch it because uh, I don't want to break it because <clears throat> I may be returning these. Okay. Let's talk about their build quality, all right? The first thing I noticed when I picked these up out of the box uh, was just how light they were. Um, and then the second thing I noticed is, um, I don't know if, if we're gonna do that, is that they sounded like an empty five gallon bucket, all right? So how are they built? They look okay from about five feet. Um, they're actually not bad looking close up, but I literally think they're made out of uh, a little bit more than a quarter inch. Now, I don't think it's quite half inch uh, MDF. Okay. They have a glossy front baffle, uh, not ported. All right. So they're sealed. What kind of crossover do they have? I don't know because I didn't open them up to look. We'll talk about that in the in the sound section, but uh, um, I don't know what kind of crossover they have. Okay, let's talk about how they sound. Surprisingly, they don't sound very bad, um, w with certain caveats. Oh, also, you want to take note of how they're like laid out. So the tweeter on here is on the interior. Uh, if this is the right or left speaker, okay? So, tweeter on the interior if it's left speaker. The tweeter on the opposite speaker is in exactly the same position, okay? So, they're not offset, okay? Does that affect imaging and soundstage? Yeah, it sure does. Um, actually, they imaged and soundstaged, okay? Surprisingly. They had a pretty good center image. I didn't notice much about the soundstage, I just knew that they imaged okay. I did feel, I did hear something in the middle, okay? Here's the thing about the sound. Bass is actually pretty good. Um, pretty good texture too, and pretty good uh, presence for a, a sealed enclosure. I didn't really have anything bad to say about the bass. Um, where I have some concerns is in the mid-range and the uh, treble. There is a definitive resonance around the 800 hertz and also the 1200 hertz regions to the point where at louder volumes, 85 dB or higher, 
it is really unpleasant um, in a smaller room. The highs, I feel like, are boosted. It's clear. Don't get me wrong. This is a clear speaker. There's no muffle. There's no, I don't know, lack of detail. They're clear. And if you're using these for like front uh, speakers in a home theater, it's going to be fine. Frankly, you're going to be able to get them right against the wall and not really have any issues. For music at louder volumes, there will be significant issues with um, a boost at the 800 hertz area. And I don't think it's a boost. I think it's a lack of a crossover. And then it's two drivers coming together. And then there's uh, some mm, pretty bad stuff going on. And the, the highs are pretty bad. I used the Blue Sound Node 2i and actually ran these off of the uh, Rysong A10 tube amp. They're pretty efficient too. They're like 90 dB. They're not like, they're stated at 90 dB. So it doesn't take a lot to drive these. I maxed out, why well, I didn't max out. I turned up the bass a fair amount, probably 4 dB, and I took the treble down 3 dB on the tone controls on the Blue Sound Node 2i. And it was okay, that, but still, there's a de definite resonance uh, going on at, at both the 800K, or yeah, 800 hertz, and then the uh, 800K, that's pretty high, 800 hertz, and then the 2k ish and that's you don't want resonances there because that can be real fatiguing real quick okay so what are my final thoughts by the way cheap audio man mug and then you can't really see it so that's the cheap body, man. I didn't like it. I wish it was just all black. I didn't really care for it. So maybe we'll get different mugs. And then on the back, it says binge listen and fill your soul with happiness in like a uh, lighter, lighter font. I like it. Okay. Um, what are my final thoughts? Um, for $130, if you uh, want a decent speaker, this is not it. I would look at... Even at 150, I would look at the Sony SSCS fives. Uh, if you can pull uh, $180 out of your pocket, I would give that to JBL, the Stage A130. However, here's the thing about this speaker. I think it could be a tinkerer's fun little project because I think in here, there's some raw materials that I think you could utilize to make a really decent speaker. Now, with that said, I think you're going to, or one is going to have to completely redesign the crossover, if there's a crossover in there. One is going to have to brace the cabinet significantly. In a garage, if you're not doing any critical listening to music, it's fine. Even if you are doing music and there's a lot of ambient noise, this may be okay. In a living room, I would say home theater use only. And even with that, voices are going to sound very pronounced. So if you have a receiver, I would EQ these a lot um, to get try to minimize that mm, shouty nature at 700 and 2k it could be fun for folks i think you could get i think this could be an outstanding speaker because the woofer actually i think sounds great if you wanted to get even more bass extension you could port them too and i read some of the reviews on this that that's what one guy did he just drilled a couple holes in the back and that was his port and he said the bass was awesome at that point okay so I would steer clear of these if you don't plan on uh, modifying them. If you do, I think it could be a lot of fun. It could be a ton of fun. I think uh, there's enough drivers here. Now, you're always going to have to deal with this offset weird tweeter being the same on, on both speakers. But it could be fun. And uh, it would actually be something that I would be interested in doing um, if I if I was uh, had the time and that was kind of my thing to... To dive in and, and and change up a speaker this is kind of reminds me of the dayton audio speaker that has an amt tweeter 
Now, this one's actually built better than that Dayton Audio is. But there's enough things going on here that if one is inclined, they could, I don't know, throw some bracing in there and uh, some probably, I don't know, some polyfill, port it, and then uh, build a crossover. Have some fun with it. Even if you just build a first order high pass, you could probably get these sounding a lot better. First order high pass for the mid range and, and the tweeter. You could probably get it sounding a lot better. Okay. Would I recommend them? Only if you want to tweak them. Only if you want to tweak them. There's too many other speakers in this price category that are too good uh, to if you're just going to buy something and put it up and not mess around with it. Okay. So. If you want to support the channel, you can buy merchandise. Yeah. Cheap Audio Man stuff. Linked in the description. I also have a Patreon. We have Zooms on Sunday. And then we have a group that you can join if you're part of the Patreon. We also have links in the description. Any of those links, if you click on them, I get a commission. Not all of them, but most of them I get a commission off of. So if you want to buy the, the Yamaha... NS, NS 6490s, you sure can. I'll put the link in the description. You can also sign up for Amazon Music HD. There's a link in the description. Click on the link, scroll down to the bottom, click Try HD. I have some test tracks linked in the playlist for Amazon HD. I have uh, test tracks, I have the Satanic Panic, and I have Leg Warmers, which is some fun 80s music. Um, okay. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen to your favorite streaming services, probably not on the Yamahas, unless you're going to heavily modify them and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.